In this episode of The Biggest Jesus, we'll see how one leading Christian teacher tries to explain God's love and fails miserably. God is at peace with the world. He is at peace with you. How can this be? Jesus died for your sins. Jesus was entombed. Jesus was roused the third day. John Piper is a leading teacher in the Christian church. He is an American. He is probably the foremost Calvinist in the world, uh, or one of the most well-known Calvinists in the world. You can find his teachings at DesiringGod.org, which I will reference. The scriptures teach that God sent Jesus to be the Savior of the world. And that includes all of humanity. Now, Calvinists teach that God sent his son to die to save only some of the world, those that are called the elect or the chosen. So in Calvinism, if we look at these two camps, we have the chosen or the elect. We'll call this guy Woody. And then we have those who are not chosen and are not elect. Uh, this guy, his name is Dammit Dahl. We'll call him Dammit. So, according to Calvinists, when God sent Jesus to the earth to die, Jesus was only sent to die to save the elect. The rest, he did not actually die to save them. And this is because this was God's choice from before humanity was even created. Now, if we look at who are chosen or who are elect, Throughout the scriptures, we can see that Jesus was chosen by God. Israel was chosen by God. And the body of Christ, they are chosen by God. According to Calvinists, only those that are elect are chosen by God for salvation. The rest, God has chosen them, but he has chosen them to suffer in hell forever, according to the Calvinists, to be tormented forever, according to the Calvinists. Now, there are some Calvinists that are annihilationists, but for the sake of this uh, episode, I'm just going to be primarily focusing on eternal torment. So, as you can imagine, one of the challenges for Calvinism is then to try to explain God's love for all people, which John 3.16 3, says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So it's pretty clear from that scripture and many others that God actually loves all of humanity. He created all of humanity. He loves all of humanity. The scriptures are very clear on that. But can we really say of God that he loves someone if God had predestined this person to suffer in hell forever? And there's nothing that this person can do about it. God did not send Jesus to die for Dammit, or those like Dammit. God did not provide the belief that Dammit needs in Jesus' death for his salvation. So God has withheld everything necessary for salvation from Dammit while providing it for Woody and those in the elect or chosen camp. So the challenge for the Calvinist is how to say that God loves everyone. Well, John Piper attempts to do this, and he fails miserably. We will take a look at the analogy that he uses, and I think it falls very short because his analogy doesn't carry his beliefs all the way to the end for Woody and the elect and for Dammit and the non-elect. His analogy only gives you part of the story, but with some help from a famous friend, we will give you the rest of the story. I'm getting Piper's analogy from an article he wrote. This is on DesiringGod.org, What We Believe About the Five Points of Calvinism, by John Piper, founder and teacher, DesiringGod.org. Scrolling down through the article, we can see this. Uh, we can see this paragraph in which Piper uses his analogy. Let's read through this, and you'll kind of get an understanding of where he's coming from as you read through this. He says, there is a particular love for the bride in this sacrifice that the church misses when she only thinks that God did not have any particular people in mind when he bought the church with his son's blood. I used to say to the church I served, I love all the women of this church, but I love my wife in a very special way. 
I would not want Noelle to think that she is loved just because I love all women and she happens to be a woman. So it is with God and all the people of the world. There's a universal love for all, but there's a particular love that he has for the bride. And when Christ died, there was a particular aim in that death for her. He knew her from the foundation of the world, and he died to obtain her. This analogy that he uses is what I want to focus on here. I love all the women of this church, but I love my wife in a very special way. I'll admit, when I first read that analogy, I was shocked, and I wondered, did any of the women in his church leave the church after this analogy? Do you think any of them thought this analogy through to its end in their own mind and uh, confronted John Piper about this? I think it's time to finish this analogy. Mr. Harvey? Now, the rest of the story. Thank you, Paul. I'm taking you back to an article I wrote on my website, biggestjesus.com, back in 2018. The article is titled, Limited Atonement is a Doctrine of Demons. And we can see here how this little demon is telling Daniel, the atonement is limited, Daniel. Scroll down to the rest of the story. This is my writing, finishing Piper's analogy using his wife and the women in the church. Let's take a look and see if we carry his analogy out to its full completion of what Calvinists actually teach concerning God's love for all people, concerning God only choosing the elect for salvation, and choosing the rest for damnation and hell forever and ever. And I'm picturing here an after church service meal at the church, and this is Piper wrapping up the, the meal. Ladies, ladies, please, can I have your attention? Thank you for attending this fine get-together that I have prepared especially for you. After our meal today, Noelle and I will be going home to our beautiful estate to enjoy well-deserved naps. As we leave, I will be locking you inside the church building. Then I will set it on fire. It's going to be a spectacular blaze. There will be no escape, so please conserve your energy and try not to scream too loudly. We do have neighbors. And miraculously, you will not die in the fire. How's that for a cool trick? You'll be tormented forever, but please remember as you suffer forever that I truly love you with a general, world-embracing kind of love. I hope this gives you a measure of comfort in your never-ending agony. Well, enough of that. Eat up, ladies. This is your last meal. And don't forget to grab a piece of Noel's famous cherry pie. If God had planned long before any of these humans were born, that their destiny would be an eternal torment and an agonizing hell, an everlasting torment that they cannot escape from. God did not provide for their salvation. God knew what their end would be, yet he chose to create them. Anyway, how in the world, how in the world could it be said that he loved Dammit? How in the world could it be said that he loved in any way, shape, or form those women in the church when he knew, when God knew that was the end that he had planned for them? That is not love. I don't care how you slice it, John Piper. I don't care how you slice it, Calvinist. That is not love. That is a distortion of the true God of the scriptures, who is love, who loves all people. Who loves his creation he sent his son because he loved us while we were still enemies God's plan was from before the creation of humanity and yes there are chosen people there are elect people to do certain things in God's plan like I said Jesus was chosen Israel was chosen the body of Christ was chosen but just because God chooses certain people for certain jobs and even if God loves the elect and the chosen more than the rest it doesn't mean that he does not love them he does not love them and have to damn them to prove prove his love for the chosen I think God has enough love to go around to everyone and that we can truly say 
that Christ died to save all, and that we can truly say that Christ died because he loves all, because God loves all. So yes, whether you're elect or whether you're not, God loves you. God has saved you through the death of Christ. So whether you're in the same boat with, with Woody and those that get to enjoy God's salvation earlier than those who don't, don't dismay. God loves you. God still has a plan for you. God has planned everything out from long before the creation of humanity. I want to assure you that God loves you. And if you talk to a Calvinist and they try to tell you that God loves those that he damns to hell forever long before he even created them, look that Calvinist square in the eye and say, you are so full of Calvinism. Hopefully now this will give you some ammunition to say, you're trying to tell me about a God that does not exist. A God that is not in the scriptures. That is a far cry from the true God of the Bible. The God who is love.